And once again, something is spinning around me. Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be talking about, well, this right here. The strangest, or one of the strangest, objects in the solar system. The object known as Haumea. And this is actually what we believe it really looks like, and how it spins. With a slightly more accurate representation of this being right here. This is the colored version. Mostly because the scientists believe that it has a dark patch on the surface, very likely produced by various types of organic molecules turning dark over time. This is actually known as the tholines, and we've discussed this in one of the older videos that should be in the description. But that's not really the main purpose of the video. The main purpose of the video is the new study that potentially discovers how this strange object was actually created. Because up until recently, it was actually almost impossible to explain how exactly such an unusual and such a peculiar object was created so far away from the sun. But I guess first let me describe exactly what we're looking at here. This egg-shaped object that spins every 4 hours, that has two moons and ring-like formations around it, is technically something we refer to as Kubibano, more officially known as the classical Kuiper Belt object, something that orbits beyond planet Neptune and something that generally has a relatively circular orbit but is not really controlled by Neptune at all. It's basically its own thing, but it's usually something much much smaller than a typical planet. The object known as Erika that New Horizons took a picture of is one of the better known examples here. Oh, the, wait, wait, I just made a mistake. Okay, Haumea is not a Kibiwano anymore. It was officially discovered to have a slight resonance with Neptune, which make it orbit form these very beautiful vibrating shapes because of its relationship with Neptune as it orbits around the Sun. So I guess I made a mistake right in the beginning of the video. Although technically, this was on purpose. I actually just wanted to talk about Kibiwanos and what exactly they represent. Anyway, of all of the objects out there, past the orbit of Neptune, and actually even within the orbit of Neptune, Haumea is still just really really strange. Here are the actual images of this object and its moons, taken by the Hubble telescope over several days back in 2008. So because of its somewhat spherical shape, this is technically a dwarf planet. But because of its very high spin, it's a dwarf planet that assumed a very strange egg-like shape. A single rotation here is approximately 4 hours long, and this is by far the fastest spinning object we have of this size in the solar system. Something that really surprised the scientists when they originally discovered this back in 2003, with the object confirmed a few years later. But one of the reasons it has the rounded shape, and also one of the reasons it even possesses all of these unusual properties on the surface, is also because it's very water rich. Being made almost entirely out of various types of ices, including water. And it also has two moons. One of them, Namaka, that's approximately 170 kilometers across, and one of them, Hiyaka, approximately 310 kilometers across. So quite large moons as well. Although obviously much smaller than Haumea, that's roughly around 2300 kilometers across. Here's sort of how it would compare to planet Earth, and to objects like Pluto, Eris, and some of the other dwarf planets we've discovered so far. But, as this image shows us, it does look extremely different from everything else. Almost like a completely alien object that just doesn't belong in this picture. And so the mystery of its origin has been bugging the scientists for a couple of decades. But there was a proposition and an explanation from back in the days that involved some of the other objects discovered in this region. Several other objects have been discovered to have very similar orbits to Haumea and are now classified as being in the Haumea family but it just happens to be the largest object in the family. And although most of them seem to possess very similar ice-like properties on the surface, and obviously have very similar orbits, as a matter of fact this seems to be the only family of asteroids known to us that's definitively part of the same family located in the Kuiper's belt, most other ones are usually much closer to us in the solar system, all of this of course suggested that they probably all came from one single object. One large massive collision that very likely happened billions of years ago that created all of this. But a collision generally produces something like this. A typical asteroid shape that we've detected many times before, with the other family members not really being particularly unusual either. So why exactly is Haumea like this? What happened to it to make it so strange and so extremely unusual compared to anything else we have in the solar system? Haumea, why you be like this? Well, by being able to explain what happened here, we might actually be able to understand what happened in the early solar system, because this kind of helps us understand how these various objects were formed and what all of these collisions led to. There are still so many mysteries we don't really understand about the solar system, including of course the creation of our own moon from another collision that happened a long time ago. 
Well, without physically visiting this object, it's actually kind of difficult to answer these questions. But it's possible by trying to conduct various computer simulations and then essentially matching what we find with what we actually observe. And since this is such a weird object, if the computer is able to create something very similar to this, it's most likely to be the actual answer. And that's what the scientists behind this paper did, with the results actually being extremely interesting. The paper let it go. Geophysically driven injection of the Haumea family members. I mean, the title kind of spoils it a little bit, but there were some really surprising discoveries as well. And so in this case, by using the size, the mass, the rotation speed, the overall density, the scientists used the mathematical equations to essentially calculate what would produce this. Since many of these objects also experience collisions, which of these simulations and collisions would actually produce something as unusual as Haumea? With the most likely explanation being this. Two objects that were relatively similar in size and composition colliding almost head-on to produce an object that was spinning very fast. So fast, as a matter of fact, that the core inside the object started to differentiate and produce various layers. Now, because of this differentiation, the inside of Haumea is very likely a lot more dense and much more rocky. Which is pretty much exactly what the scientists have been discovering as well. It does seem to have more density on the inside. But the surface was almost entirely ice. And so because now we had a lot of mass on the inside and not so much mass on the outside due to density differences, the object would actually spin even faster and faster as the differentiation happened. Basically, it decreases the moment of inertia, and so the rotation accelerated, the shape changed even more, and more and more ices appeared on the surface. And this resulted in a separation of really large chunks, large enough to become their own objects. As a matter of fact, the scientists think that all of these objects were created in this way. They were thrown off the surface and eventually acquired their own orbits as they moved away from Haumea itself. But because of the rocky internal structure of Haumea, it also very likely possessed a lot of isotopes similar to planet Earth and obviously similar to all of the other rocky objects in the solar system. This very likely resulted in the heat on the inside. And that heat might have actually resulted in some kind of a liquid ocean on the inside that might have existed there for hundreds of millions of years, maybe even a few billion years. Very similar to the oceans we believe exist on objects like Europa, Titan, Ganymede and so on. But with time, all of this mixed with the rocks on the inside and very likely just hydrated the core, creating a kind of a clay-like formation on the inside. In other words, instead of still having differentiated liquid ocean and rocky internal structure, it's a lot more likely that the water mixed with the rock, making it a little bit less dense, which would eventually slow down the rotation of Haumea to its current rate. Which is also essentially why it didn't just fall apart eventually as it spun faster and faster. It lost all of these objects and produced its two moons as a result, including of course the rings that it has, but after this the core very likely became a little bit less dense and the rotation slowed down. Although obviously the most interesting part of this research is really the fact that it seems that this object had a liquid ocean for at least 200 million years or so. And since we already think that objects like Europa might actually have life living in the oceans there, for all we know, maybe life at some point formed here as well. But since now it's probably frozen, it's obviously unknown what's happening there now. But it would still make Haumea a really exciting object to one day potentially visit, maybe even launch some kind of a probe here to land on and possibly even drill into the surface in order to actually figure out if we can find something underneath. Now the mission itself would be kind of difficult to achieve right now, especially because this object is really far away, but it would definitely be one of the more exciting missions to one of the strangest objects in the solar system. But if in the next 15 years, after the mission to Titan, after the mission to Europa, and also after all of the Martian missions, we still don't really find life anywhere there, well then in this case, life here is probably also quite unlikely. But if we do find life on one of those objects, maybe visiting Haumea sometimes in the future, could also be very useful for our understanding of formation of life. But I guess just the fact that this object that's orbiting around the sun every 280 years, and the object where the temperatures are really low, had the liquid ocean, is already a pretty exciting discovery. And being able to explain how this formed is even more exciting. Although naturally, unless we actually physically go there and find evidence of all of this in some of the deposits, it's still for now at least just a theory. Even the best telescopes cannot really tell us what's happening on the surface here, because as I've showed you, even the best pictures from Hubble barely show us anything here. All of these are just recreations based on our current understanding of how we think dwarf planets look from what we've seen on Pluto and some of the other objects. This is still the best image we have of Haumea, and it's not going to get any better anytime soon. 
even the James Webb is not going to be able to take a picture that's going to be much higher in resolution, but it still should. And if it does, I'm going to make sure to follow this up with another video because we might discover something else in the process. Until future discoveries, well at least for now, maybe check out some of the other videos about Hame in the description below or some of the other dwarf planets we've discussed previously. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.